Hey, good evening. I'd like to call to order the planning board meeting for Thursday, May 6, 2021. If we could all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, so joining us today, um, introduction of board members, we have Jerry Graybill to my left, we have Allison Hurley to my right, and Phil Roy, and then we have Paul Amatucci and Amber Fecto on, on Zoom. Okay, so Amber, Phil's going to be our um, voting member today, because he's here. Um, yeah. So now we're gonna have our public hearing for the conditional use application salon spa, um, educational facility, existing use, functional hall, J Everly salon and wellness. So we had, uh, we sent a butters notices. Uh, we had no one email, no one sent in letters and we don't have anyone in attendance. Okay. So I guess we'll close the public hearing for that then. Um, and then there's a public comment. Seeing how no one's here, I think we'll close the public comment. And um, next is going to be the approval of minutes for April 15th, 2021. I'll make a motion to approve. Okay. I'll second. Okay. Further discussion? Nope. All in favor, we'll do a roll call, I guess. Um, Jerry? Yes. Um, Allison? Yes. Phil? Yes. And then we got Paul? Yes. Okay. There you go. Can you sign those? Yep. Sign back. Thank you very much. Okay, next is old business, conditional use amendment and site plan review, adult use marijuana production facility, 569 Portland Street. Easy going LLC. Yeah, so I'll, Evan submitted um, some materials. Um, thank you for doing that, pulling that together, Evan. Um, we had a question raised about DEP and marijuana Mac manufacturing, and I had a fairly extended discussion with DEP, and they assured me that um, any environmental concerns will be addressed through their state licensing. Um, we had a few leftover items from the last meeting. The lighting, lighting has been addressed. A lighting plan has been submitted with the shields. Thank you, Dino. If you're watching, we appreciate you working with us. Parking plan has been updated. 37 spots in totals are, total are provided. Building elevations have been included and there is a building setback of 25 feet and the building has been relocated to the side of the cultivation facility and uh, not behind it. My one question um, for the applicant is who's going to be constructing the manufacturing lab? Um, and from here for the board would be discussing discussing application completeness. And if you guys find it complete, my suggested date would be May 20th for that. Okay, so I guess, um... We'd be looking for a motion to find the application complete. Yeah, I know one item, and I've missed a few meetings, so I'm, I'm only concede maybe this has been addressed. But we did talk about the fire chief doing a walkthrough and approving. Did that? Do we know if that happened? Yep. The, okay. um, so fire chief has done a walkthrough. Okay. Um, I have an email from him corresponding. Seems like everything's okay at this point. Okay. Um, this is just this is application completeness at this point. Okay. They still have one more meeting. Um, I know Evan. Evan, we, we requested some stuff for you if you want to um, kind of summarize the things you submitted for tonight, that'd be helpful for us. Right, well, of course, everything, I mean, you mentioned, we also prepared the letters to all the city officials which have been sent out. Those letters also included um, a fire protection report uh, written by our fire protection engineer that outlines the proposed process and, um, I know we had discussed at the last meeting having a presentation about 
essentially what these, how these facilities work in a typical workflow. So I brought along one of my colleagues here, Eddie's on the line. So um, I think it'd be great if he could chime in and give a kind of a description of what, how this manufacturing process works. He's a, he's worked in many labs out here in California. So he's very familiar with the, the hands-on work of doing, doing extraction. So I think it'd be great to chime in on that. Eddie, you're on mute if you're talking. We cannot hear you. You're out there. You there, Eddie? Eddie, are you okay? <laughs> well, in the meantime, while Eddie wakes up, it's getting Eddie. I mean, if the board have questions for for the applicants. Questions. Mm. And he's unmuted. Okay, I, I apologize. I was working through my app here. Uh, I apologize, guys. So uh, what I was just going to say is, again, my name is Edward Waldron. Uh, I'm a, currently a lab director out here um, in a lab in uh, Vegas. I've been at for about five years. But like I've been stated, I've, I've worked in several labs and helped with several um, of these type of processes and applications. Um, it's a very standard um, hydrocarbon extraction system that is proposed um, in the um, rated booth there. And um, I mean, essentially, if anybody's not familiar with the process, we're, we're basically using uh, butane as a hydrocarbon solvent in a closed system um, that is obviously rated for its use. Um, and essentially, we're filling the system with liquid, you know, petroleum gas solvent, which is 100% butane, and essentially extracting the biomass, pushing that solvent over through the biomass into a different collection vessel that, is, again, is fully closed and rated. And essentially, all of our butane is, uh, you know, distilled or evaporated out of the concentrate back into um, our solvent tank in the closed system. And essentially, the system is, is pretty much in a vacuum when we um, open it up to remove any of the oil. Obviously, that's all done in a rated you know, area um, as per the plans. But it's, it's pretty a pretty basic system. Um, if anybody needs any more clarification on you know, specific processes, but essentially, we're taking raw you know, LPG um, gas from those tanks. We're filling the systems. It stays in that system wholly contained um, in the rated booth. And then essentially we're just performing the extraction where again, it's, it's being uh, pushed over through the biomass, recovered. Um, and then prior to obviously removing or taking out of the concentrate out of that system, it, it's you know, all of the butane is probably about 99% removed minus what you're going to do you, there's a, always a little residual purging for residual solvents that's done outside of that process in a vacuum uh, excuse me a heated vacuum oven um but for the most part about 99 percent of the solvents are completely evacuated from your oil before you're removing them uh, from the system and then moving on to your further post-processing thank you you're very welcome so tonight would be finding the application complete and then um, scheduling that the public hearing and probably want to do a site walk to check out the cultivation facility um, or check out where the, the site, if that's something that you guys wanted to do. Yeah. Oh. <clears throat> uh, I do have one question basically on this system. So as, as it goes through that system and we have the uh, 
and the system is open and there was minor gas emissions or something, are there any noxious fumes that are emitted during this process that get out of that building or into the open air? No, no, absolutely not. Um, like I said, when we're when we remove the oil or the concentrated cannabis from that system, it's essentially in a vacuum. Um, so to answer your question, no. Um, if there are any residual butane, you know, fumes, it's going to be wholly contained within the rated um, booth there, and it will be completely evacuated before literally anybody you know comes in or out of that room by just by you know uh the flow rate of how we have the evacuation fans on those on those booths so if there was any butane you know entered into that room it would stay within the booth it would be evacuated um and then if it you know if for whatever reason if it went above above a level where it's going to you know potentially be a hazard there are sensors that will trigger um, additional exhaust fans to um, turn on, and it will notify staff to uh, you know exit the that area, which is essentially that contained booth. That's kind of I, I don't want to say worst case scenario, but they're designed for that. So if there was for whatever reason additional you know fumes or solvents that were present in that booth specifically, um, you know the system and the and the sensors will do their job and notify the people that are in there, if there is a higher level. Um, but essentially any gas or, you know, noxious fumes from the butane or other hydrocarbon solvents that do uh, make it out of the system when you're taking out of the concentrated cannabis will be evacuated and contained just to that fire rated booth. How about a, uh, a cannabis odor that's being emitted from the, uh, from the building? Any of that? The odor, I apologize. Uh, the odors, you, you definitely are going to be smelling cannabis uh, in that room, but it's not something that is hazardous or it's, it, it's, it's not going to be um, chemicals or any additional type of uh, flammable solvents or other, like you said, noxious chemicals that, you know, really the only thing we're dealing with is cannabis and butane in there. And um, of course, it, it is going to smell like the biomass you're extracting, but that's not something that is hazardous to either employees working in that area. For the most part, in that contained booth, like I said, a lot of those kind of smells will be evacuated. But um, every cannabis facility I've been in, you you smell the cannabis. I mean, there's there's obviously mitigation things that are in place to help with the smell, especially outside of the building. But as far as inside. You're, you will definitely be smelling what the cannabis, uh, essentially the, the aromatics and the terpenes from the flavonoids of the actual biomass, but uh, no additional harmful chemicals or solvents would make it out of that uh, rated booth. So I can, let me chime in on that one quick. Um, so as part of the mechanical design, we include a carbon filter attached to the exhaust fan. So that will filter out any of those potential smells that would be coming out in the exhaust from the booth. Correct. Yeah, I saw the uh, the schematic diagram and, and it shows that big horseshoe exhaust coming out of the building. And I'm just wondering what's coming out of there. And is that going to be, you know, a big time cannabis smell for that area? Uh, I would no, say so no, like, like yeah, Evan suggested they're having a, a carbon filtration that essentially scrubs your air prior to as it as it's being evacuated from the booth, but before it actually enters the atmosphere of the out exterior of the building. So, um, and the, those type of carbon filters or charcoal filters are pretty standard to you know scrub the air and ensure that um, those smells are not evacuating the building and you know becoming a I guess a nuisance potentially. We also have a pretty strict odor control policy here in Berwick. So even if there was odors coming out of the building, we would take care of that right away. There you go. Are there, are there, and I assume there's an initial inspection with the Office of Marijuana Policy to make sure everything's installed correctly. 
as part of the license, are there ongoing inspections, annual inspections or biannual inspections? This sounds like it's a sophisticated process. So what happens if a, if a meter goes out or a fan goes out? Well, so, so one thing to keep in mind is the way that the engineer peer review is written for this boost system. When we commission the booth initially, we'll have the fire protection engineer that wrote the report come out and certify that the system has been properly installed and that all the sensors are dialed in, that the fans are properly calibrated for the both the typical operating speed as well as the purge emergency operating speed. Um, as far as intermittent inspections and, and ongoing safety measures, we will have a battery backup system on the booth control panel itself. So, in, for example, in the case of a power loss, that will affect the booth's ability to evacuate any um, solvent saturated air. Um, so there, there is a series of, of systems in place that ensure that, you know, loss of power doesn't negatively affect the, the boost capability. So. <laughs> And I just wanted to quickly add that even with, like Evan was mentioning, uh, there are kind of preventative maintenance steps that you can also take on these sensors to routinely calibrate them um, and ensure that they're in good working order, um, et cetera. So that's something that will be incorporated into the, you know, just the, the normal SOPs for operations um, on either, you know, monthly, quarterly uh, basis, so on and so forth. Ron, did you have something to add? Or did you accidentally? Uh, I was just going to reiterate what Evan had said, that that would be part of the SOP for the process is to check those systems and make sure that they're in working order. There is an inspection uh, from the state as we move through this. Um, but I don't, I believe once the system is certified, that's it. Um, it's up to the operator to stay in compliance. But I could be wrong, so... They would do periodic inspections, but there's no annual, biannual. It's just a, whenever they feel like inspecting it, basically. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> Unless someone calls to complain, that's usually, yeah. you know, that's. I mean, we, we, we may consider, me and Jen and I will talk about maybe we want to see an inspection done every year or just something that you're certified, the system's all, all good, or this is how we maintain the system just to. Just that have a level of surety, just just to protect our, you know, our fire fire department. That's that's my main concern. Concern. But. Yeah, that, that would just like to add to that. Going back to what Evan has stated on the SOPs, I think those are all logs and um, you know routine like preventive maintenance logs and manuals that the the team will have in place for the local fire department, even if they have to have those you know semi or annual inspections. Um, again, I think that'll incorporating their SOPs along with the fire engineer to make sure that those preventive maintenance items and steps are being taken with regard to the booth and, and making sure the sensors are calibrated. Um, I, I believe that's all going to be incorporated into their SOPs. So when those inspections do happen, they have all of those records and documents showing uh, what was done to, you know, essentially maintenance and, and keep the system up and running. Great. Does Jen have anything to add? Yeah, I just want to add a couple things. Um, one thing I would like to see happen is when they do um, their inspection and they're hooking everything up, um, I would like them to invite Chief Plant out so he can see how it works just in case he gets called to a fire call so that he can educate his, um, his employees. And another thing that he's been asking for on job sites lately, which makes sense for us to have in our file too, is a blank layout of the building that shows where the fire alarm system is and the smoke detectors are in the building. Um, so if we can just get a quick copy of that, it can be a blank copy. You don't have to really, um, you know, map out the whole building, just those few things. So we can give it to Dennis so we don't have to ask for it later. And then James and I can throw it in the file uh, just in case. Cool. Yeah. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve. Is that where we're going with this? Yep. To All find right. The application complete. Yep. <laughs> All right. Uh, so I might start a motion that I found it complete. <laughs> I'll second. Okay. Further discussion? No? I think we're good. All right. Roll call. Jerry? Yes. 
I say yes, Allison? Yep. So, yes. And then Paul? Yes. Okay, there we go. <laughs> then um, we should schedule the public hearing for uh, May 20th. May 20th. And then let's let's plan for a site walk. Is it going to be on the 20th? Yep. Okay, for 5 o'clock? 5 o'clock. 5 o'clock. 5 o'clock. 5 o'clock. Evan, we'll see you at the site walk. We'll fly you over. <laughs> All right. Okay. Thank okay. you. Now, well, back to new old business. Conditional use application, salon, spa, gym, yoga, recreational facility, educational facility, existing use, functional hall, J. Everly Salon, and wellness. So I'll, bring, I'll let James take care of this. Sure, we had a say walk earlier today. Um, small, one of the small things, we just had a question on if the stormwater pond was functioning. That's um, that's something we can we can take care of. Uh, the town will will be um, inspecting these uh, across town, so that's something we'll score up at that at that time. Um, Chelsea said that um, she touched base with DOT and she'll provide the updated DOT entrance permit to the file, and that's a condition of approval. And then one new condition of approval was added to. Um, inform the state fire marshal of the change of use and to submit any approvals to the file. And I think that I think that covers it. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to be looking for a motion to approve the application. I'll make a motion to approve the application. A second. Okay, for other discussion. No, oh, all right. Roll call, Jerry. Yes. Okay, I vote yes. Allison. Yes. Phil? Yes. And then Paul. Yes. All right, there we go. We found the application complete and approved. Next is the findings fact. All right. A lot of the stuff for the findings of fact. Um, you know, a lot of times sites sites are already built out. There's no site work. The building's already built. They're just doing interior construction, so a lot of the findings are, are, are not applicable. Okay. There's just the um, actually vote for the on the conditions of approval as well. The two conditions of approval and the findings of fact. Okay. All right. So we're gonna need a motion for the conditions of approval. I'll make a motion to approve the conditions of approval. Okay. I'll second that. Okay. Um, further discussion? All set. All right. Roll call. Jerry? Yes. Okay. I'll vote yes. Allison? Yep. Bill? Yes. And then Paul? Yes. Okay. And then the findings of fact? Yep. I will make a motion to approve the findings of fact. <laughs> I'll second that. All right. Further discussion? No. All right. Roll call. Jerry? Yes. All right, I vote yes. Allison? Yep. Bill? Yes. And then Paul? Yes. All right, so findings of fact are approved. And that's that for that, right? That's it. Okay. So <laughs> now we're going to open up to the public comment again. Um, is there anyone online? Nope. Okay, any informational items? Does anyone have any information? The like to... town is involved with a pretty high level study with uh, funded by the Department of Defense, looking at uh, housing opportunities for shipyard employees and transportation to the shipyard. Um, this involves regional planners. Um, Susan Collins' office was in, in these meetings, Angus King, all the way through to town managers. Um, the town of Berwick sends the third of, third most employees from Berwick to the shipyard. Um, so we're kind of tagging along in this major study um, and we're gonna have a panel of experts here next Friday. Um, and we have a, a panel of, of local Berwick reps and uh, it's gonna be cool to be part of that study to look at potentially bus routes, um, anywhere from up from Sanford connecting um, maybe a bus route to Pratt Whitney could be part of that and creating more convenient transportation to open up bus lines to Kittery, Portsmouth, not only for the shipyard, but other destinations. So it's 
really a, a start of a regional wide effort to make um, public transit actually sustainable and viable. So it's 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 exciting. Mm -hmm. Anyone else have some info? No. Okay. Then I guess the next is the adjournment. If there's no uh, further issues uh, from the esteemed Burgess meeting room in the depths of the Berwick Town Hall, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. I'll second that. <laughs> all right, all in favor? All right, all right, here we go. All right, good night, guys. <laughs> Thank you. All right.